<clears throat> Welcome in, ladies, gents, and degenerates. I'm Brian Edwards, MajorWager.com. Let's talk some Boston College Eagles, year two of the Jeff Halfley Hera, <laughs> Hera, excuse me, Jeff Halfley era. And I am quite bullish on the BC Eagles to go over seven wins which you can get at a minus 125 price at BetMGM. Currently, uh, I, there might be a minus 120 out there somewhere. Um, I know DraftKings has got it a price a little higher than that. Um, but you should be able to get it in the minus 20 to minus 130 range. Again, minus 125 if you've got a BetMGM account. So let's look at last year for BC. Uh, they go 6-5, and five, but straight, straight up and against the spread. Uh, however, uh, four of the five losses were to ranked squads. Uh, in fact, a, a four-point loss to North Carolina, which was ranked 12th at the time. BC actually scored a touchdown to cut the deficit to 24-22 um, in the final minute and went for two. And UNC uh, got a turnover. I, I don't remember if it was a scoop and score or a pick six or pick two, obviously two points rewarded if you return it for a, um, uh, if you take it all the way back on a, uh, a, a two-point conversion or a PAT attempt. So it was a 26-22 final in favor of North Carolina, but uh, BC easily covered as a 14.5 point home underdog. The next week they beat Pitt outright as a 6.5 point home underdog. Then they lost at Virginia Tech. It was a lopsided score, but it was a misleading uh, final. Uh, in fact, uh, BC had 435 yards of offense and 24 first downs uh, compared to Virginia Tech's 461 yards of offense and 23 first downs. So they were barely out yarded and had um, one more first down. Uh, turnovers kind of um, you know, kind of uh, skewed the score. Uh, they won by double digits over Georgia Tech uh, and Duke. Uh, they had a 28 to 10 lead on Clemson uh, in the second quarter, led 28 13 at halftime, ended up losing 34 uh, 28 at top ranked uh, Clemson. Uh, then they had the lead most of the first half against then second ranked and then undefeated uh, Notre Dame, but ended up losing. Uh, 45-31, then they beat Louisville, and they closed the season without their star quarterback, Phil, Phil Dracovic. Uh, Dennis Grossel actually played very well um, as backup in that game, but they lost at Virginia to close the season. After all the COVID restrictions, they declined uh, to be considered for, for a bowl invite. So, coming back, they've got nine starters on offense, eight on defense. They only lose 14 uh, lettermen. Uh, let's start with Dracovic. Um, just an outstanding uh, season for him. His first at Boston College, uh, he had uh, redshirted at Notre Dame, was a four-star uh, recruit, then didn't get any play in time behind Ian Book uh, in his redshirt freshman year, and transferred to BC. Uh, but with not losing a year of eligibility with COVID, uh, there is now such thing as a fourth-year sophomore, and that is what he is, but he will be eligible for the NFL draft after this season. Uh, if he so uh, chooses. And he had an outstanding season, uh, 10 games, 61.0 completion percentage, 2,558 yards, 17 to 5 TDI and T ratio before subtracting sack yardage, 352 rushing yards, three touchdowns on the ground. He can move. He's a big guy, 6'5", 226 is what he was listed at uh, last year. He's got one of the best receivers in the country in Zay Flowers, who had 56 catches, 892 yards, nine touchdowns, first team all ACC last year. He's also got junior wide receiver C.J. Lewis back, 28 receptions, 460 yards, and five touchdowns last season. Jalen Gill also back, 29 receptions, 435 yards, one touchdown last year. And they get Kobe White, who missed last year with a torn ACL, He's back, and he had 27 career starts and 1,409 uh, receiving career receiving yards, uh, you know, before the ACL tear 
last year. So four quality targets. Now they lose the stud tight end, Hunter Long, who uh, got drafted, I want to say fourth or fifth round. Um, don't quote me. I want to say the Eagles. I could be mistaken. But they've replaced him with a six foot six target uh, transfer from Jacksonville State, Trey Berry, who in Phil Steele's mag is listed as the number 26. I'm going off memory there. It's either 24, 25, 26 um, uh, draft eligible tight end for uh, the upcoming 22, 2022. Um, Draft and uh, the Barry kid in four years at FCS Jack State, which is uh, right outside of Talladega in Alabama, about an hour and a half from west of Hotlanta. Uh, he has 610 career uh, receiving yards at the FCS level. Now, um, deep, or, or no, I'm sorry, let's go to O line. O line, uh, Lindy's Magazine has BC's O line ranked as the second best in the country. Uh, Phil Steele's Mag, not quite as bullish, has them ranked ninth. Um, in the nation, but um, Steel's Mag did have uh, offensive guard Zion Johnson listed as a preseason first team All American, and junior center Alec Lindstrom listed as preseason second team All American. Uh, third year sophomore offensive tackle Tyler Vrabel is a preseason uh, All -A or second team All ACC choice uh, in Phil Steel's Mag. And senior offensive guard Ben Petrula was second team all ACC last year. So, uh, four future NFL linemen. Um, they got a transfer uh, running back from Utah State. Uh, they do lose David Bailey to the transfer portal, uh, but they also have um, uh, Tavis Levy uh, and Pat Garwo coming back that have a little bit of uh, running back experience in the past. So, they're not loaded in the backfield. But um, this is not the Adazio era anymore. This is going to be a pass-happy offense with a NFL quarterback, in my opinion. Now, defense is a concern, but that is Halfley's side of the ball. Uh, they have uh, added some transfers to, uh, to bolster um, their talent on, on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, a couple guys uh, from Temple. Uh, one being Isaiah Graham Mobley with 151 uh, career tackles. Uh, also, Chris Banks, 33 tackles the last two years. And a transfer safety from FSU, Jaden Lars Woodbay. All three of those guys are listed as starters coming out of the spring. And uh, they did lose their stud linebackers, Isaiah McDuffie and Max Richardson. But after that, those are their two leading tacklers. Their third through their 12th leading tacklers are all back and, and then you add in the transfers this is Halfley's uh, area of expertise no uh, spring practice going into his year one year one of his regime so not nearly the practice time to install um, his his scheme uh, you know everything he wanted to do I think they kept it a little vanilla on that side of the ball compared to what they would like to do um, and, and now they've had time to implement that uh, with spring. Uh, they're, they're, the secondary is, is solid. Uh, Phil Steele's national unit rankings uh, have them 29th. And, and by the way, his national unit rankings have their, I mentioned the O-line 9th, their receivers 18th, um, their quarterback 7th, not only Dracovic, but Dennis Grossel as well, and their special teams number 45. Um, uh, Brandon Sebastian, uh, cornerback has 28 career start, starts, had a team high 10 passes broken up last year. Cornerback Josh DeBerry was their third leading tackler last year uh, with 44 stops, six passes broken up, uh, one interception. So uh, there's some personnel, but look, th this play is all about the schedule. You know, I mentioned they played four uh, ranked teams for, for four, or they played actually one, two, three, or yeah, no, I'm sorry. Four ranked teams and and lost to all four of them. Those, those were four of their five uh, setbacks. But this year, um, no North Carolina on the schedule. The only game that looks unwinnable is at Clemson. Um, but they led by 18 at one point and by 15 at halftime at Clemson last year. So clearly that's not an unwinnable game. But it is the only game on the schedule that looks like a significant 
underdog spot. The non-conference slate is pretty soft, even though it includes two road games. They're uh, not very far road trips uh, at UMass and at Temple in back-to-back -back weeks, uh, week two and week three, and that's on the heels of hosting Colgate at home. Then week four, they host Missouri at home, and you know I think that that's a game that'll be tightly lined. I mean, I would probably call it a pick 'em or maybe BC minus one and a half, two. Um, I'll be surprised, if, you know, barring injuries going into that game, I'll be surprised if uh, that number is more than three either way. Um, so great chance to start three and one, perhaps four and zero. Oh, then the game at Clemson, then an off week, and then the four toughest uh, ACC games for BC are at home. That being NC State. Virginia Tech, who they get on a short week in revenge mode for what happened in Blacksburg at Lane Stadium last year. They get Virginia Tech on Friday. Obviously, short week, advantageous to the home team. Friday night, national television. Uh, I can vividly recall them spanking FSU on Friday night games such as that up in Chestnut Hill a number of times over the last decade or so. And then their next two ACC home games – that are their toughest are FSU and Wake. They should be decidedly favored in their three ACC road games outside of the Clemson game, those being at Louisville, at Syracuse, and at Georgia Tech. And Louisville, uh, good under Satterfield in year one, bad last year, lost 2-2 Atwell, uh, lost another stud receiver, lost running back Javian Hawkins, the speedster who went to my Falcons as an undrafted free agent. I'm fired up about that. He'll definitely make the team. So, you know, I look at, look, even if like all sorts of things go wrong, I, I still can't imagine them not going seven and five. Um, I have them favored in eight games, and I mean, you know, they could be favored in more than that. Uh, they really could. They could be favored in nine, potentially even ten. Um, really, again, at Clemson, the only uh, game that looks unwinnable. I mean, I marked them 8-1 and one with three swing games. The swing games being Missouri at home, NC State at home, and Virginia Tech at home. I have them winning every other game um, with the exception of that Clemson. And uh, certainly, they can beat Missouri and NC State at home and might even end up being favored. So I'm very bullish on Boston College, Phil Dracovic, Jeff Halfley, the Eagles over seven Minus 125 at BetMGM. Brian Edwards, MajorWager.com. Get on it. Get on BC. Over now.